Hi, welcome to my workshop again. Today, we're not talking about droid building. We're gonna be talking about building this Degeric chess table. Now, like most things I've decided to build, it's a bit more involved than I originally thought it would be. You think it's gonna be relatively difficult, but my God, the amount of stuff that's involved, I just thought I'd create this video just to help you along the way on best places to go for information, for files, for various resources and help along the way. Now, the first place to join is the Facebook group, which is where you'll find all this information anyway. Um, all the links for the files, I'll include them in the comments for this video, but join the Degeric Builders group on Facebook. They've got so much information. If you check under the announcements section, that will have all the links and all the tips that I'm gonna give you today. Um, and it's easy just to find stuff there. If you're stuck on anything, just post it to the group and there's a helpful bunch of people there. And maybe the questions have been asked already, so you should find the answers without even asking the questions sometimes. So first of all, I downloaded the STL files. Some of it I printed in resin, other parts in FDM. So the resin parts, first of all, are the keys. So I, there's 54 keys altogether. That's six rows of nine keys. And I printed them all separately on the resin printer and then glued them to this FDM printed base here. And hopefully this is gonna withstand um, a photo opportunity because I hope to take this to events when it's finished. Um, when we're back out in the wild again, doing comic cons and what have you for a photo opportunity. And this is to make it a little bit more robust. So this is just for a bit of dressing. So that's those keys. And then again, resin printed, I printed these. Now these are printed on my Elagu Mars. And what I did is in Cheetu Box, I hollowed them out to make them nice and lightweight. And the reason for that is they've got a connector and with the electronics kit that you can buy, which I'll get to in a minute, you can click these into position onto the keys and then you've got a nice interactive keyboard. So uh, yeah, they're quite a nice option to have as well, but that won't be for events so much because I think they'll just get damaged to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, so they're those resin printed as well. Then with the final resin print of the knobs, there's 10 different knobs you have to um, download and print. So I've printed them on the resin printer. I'm gonna paint them silver and hopefully they'll look good. They'll look uh, aluminium when they're done, hopefully. And then on the FDM printer, I've got a Lulzbot TAS6, which has been a great workhorse for me over the last couple of years. And it's done all this for me. So with the base, it printed this. This is six parts. Um, I can't remember how long it took to print, but um, yeah, it's quite weighty. I made I made it quite heavy infill because you don't want it to be top heavy and you'll see the top part is quite heavy. Um, so this is to help weigh down at the bottom. And uh, I'm not quite finished this yet. I'm not totally 100% happy, but it's getting there. It's looking all right and it's gonna be okay just for presentation on this video, I felt. So that's that. Um, other things I downloaded as well with the electronics kit you can download some files to hold your the electronics in place. That's for like an LCD display. There's various cable ties, some cable tidies that they included, which is really good. Um, and a nice little printed box for the electronics board as well. So that's available through the group. Um, and then the big thing, the big item is this, is a tabletop. So that's 12 separate parts. I printed two, two parts at a time, and that took 36 hours to print two parts. So do the maths, that's six prints at 36 hours. I'll do the maths and pop that up on the screen as I say it. Um, so it took a while, 20% infill, 0.3 layer height, I think it was. And you can see there, there are all the joins. And um, it went together quite nicely. A hell of a lot of sanding and filling and sanding and filling. But um, it was worth it. It took me about three weekends to get that done. But all you 3D printers out there will know, you know, it's a lot of patience. You do need to persevere and just keep going because the printer does all the work, let's face it. It prints it all out for you nicely. So it's, it's best you owe it to yourself that it has a nice finish. To help with that nice finish, we're lucky enough here in the UK to have this spray putty by Motip. There is other spray putty available, I believe, around the world. I think this is difficult to get overseas, but spray putty, I highly recommend it because it's quite a high build. On the spray putty, they recommend that you primer afterwards before putting your final paint on. So I use this U-Pole High 5, which I believe is more readily available. Um, not as good uh, filler 
as the spray putty, but it still helps. It gives a nice finishing touch. And then once sanded that down with the fine sandpaper, I've used this um, Rust-Oleum Silver Aluminium 2115. I looked through the group, had a look at what people were using for spraying their tables, and I felt that this had the best look. So I've gone with that. That's what you see here. It's not finished painting yet. I need a few more coats on this, but um, I'm quite happy with the finish. And um, yeah, once it's weathered, I'm sure it will look fine. Then the other things that I've downloaded as well are the print files for the vinyl. Fortunately, I've got a vinyl cutter. So these here, that's the positive. So that goes sticks straight onto the aluminium. And then there's this version of the sticker as well, which you can stick on spray paint your aluminium disc or whatever surface you decide to use and then peel this off so this is just like a masking template and then i'll show you the finished article on the aluminium disc so there we go so we've got a painted side and a vinyl sticker side i don't know if you can tell the difference on camera really close up you can't tell much difference either but uh yeah these aluminium discs i've made these available with a lot of my other things i'll be showing you here today that um I do make available that people can buy through my website um, and I'll include, I'll include the link in the video. So that's that. So that's another nice part finished and ready to go. And then the main reason I started this build was the monsters. I've always been fascinated by the monsters and they are so cool. Come on, you know. Um, so these are available for download through a few sources. The ones I used are from Project 842, which is Sean Fields. And he's supplied these that you can download through his Etsy page, which are great. And another one is Build It and They Will Come. They've done the files as well. The first print I did actually was on a Mars Pro, which are these ones here, the clear ones. And monsters like this are too big for the bed. So I learnt Mesh Mixer so I could split these up and do the Boolean effect. So then they have pegs and then you can print different separate components. So I like this arm, which is works out quite nice really because then it becomes hinged. But uh, yeah, these ones I've printed a full set in clear and I intend to paint them. So because I was going to paint these, whoops, that's going to fall over. I've actually gone and invested in a load of paints. These are Citadel paints and um, I'm learning CAD at the moment as well. So I've CADded up this paint holder and brush holder, which has worked out quite nice. So I'm going to teach myself a bit of painting so I can get those monsters looking nice, hopefully. And like this one I showed you previously, these are a clear blue. Um, which give a nice holographic effect. So again, I've got a set of these. So these are pretty cool. I don't know which ones I'm going to favour, but I've got two sets now, so I'll choose which ones to use. So that's those ones. Um, Galaxy's Edge at Disney Parks, they've actually um, do a, a smaller board with the characters on as well. So you can buy a smaller version if you want, or if you want to do a scaled down version of this, you could always use the monsters from Galaxy's Edge and use them on your build. The other things that I've downloaded is um, the CNC files. Now these have been created by a guy called Eric Beeks in the US and he kindly shared the files with the group and I downloaded these, got this machine cut, CNC cut. So that's the top. Then there's a framework that's the drum here. And then I've coated this in two layers of one mil styrene, tidy up the join, spray paint with the silver and it's got that effect. Some people use sono tubes. Um, other people 3D print them. There's various approaches on this, but uh, that's the method I chose. Again, something that Eric Beeks is actually selling is the pre-cut CNC wood, um, which is the same here in the UK if you're after them. I'm selling these as well. And now onto electronics. There's 10 knobs, 26 lights, and 54 keys. And Ian Martin has made this kit where all those components can be interactive. So you can buy different modules, you can break them down into separate pieces if you choose, or you can buy the whole kit. I've got the whole kit here to show you. You don't have to have this, it's not imperative that it has to light up and flash and so on. Um, if you want a cheaper option, you can just build a static one and maybe put your own little LEDs in there or something like that. But if you want to go high end, you can buy this lovely kit. Um, again, the link's on the group page on Facebook, or I'll put the, mess the link in the uh, comments of the YouTube video as well. So there's these made up for the keys and you get six of these, three for each side. Um, the USB cable to program the board. So this is your control board here. So you've got that as well. Um, then you've got your LED lights, blue and red, split 50-50. And you have to make these up yourself. So the little aluminium sleeves, 
and the LED light. I don't know if I can take this out. No, that's glued in now. But so you've got the LED light that you make yourself and then glue the lens on. I haven't peeled the stickers off yet, but you make these up yourself. Very basic soldering. I'm not the world's best solder, but I managed it. So that's uh, worth doing yourself. Then you've got some nice buttons, some rotary clicky buttons that he includes as well. Something else you can buy. And then you've got some LCD displays, one for each side. These will look great when they're lit up, I'm sure. I'll show that in the video towards the end. So that's the electronics kit. It's a great kit. It's well worth the investment in my opinion. And when you see it at the end, I'm sure you'll agree. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting all that wired up. And then going back to the vinyl, the not just the vinyl tabletop that I showed you earlier, but you get the vinyl keys as well. So the key covers, you can download these and get them vinyl cut, or some people have hand painted them on as well, which look pretty cool. And then what you do, once you've stuck them on, what I did, these have actually got a white background on. So I sprayed them silver first, coated the key with a bit of white just on the face here before I put the black vinyl sticker on. And then vice versa for the white key sticker, I just painted the face black and then put the white sticker on. And last but no means least, there are some degeric rules for a game. So you can, again, you can download them through the group and they've been created by two different people. Blake Whitlow and Scott Martin. They've created two different sets of rules. And one of the guys has actually created dice as well, which again, which you can download and print out. And you can play your own game. Now, I read that it's great. It's quite comprehensive, the instruction booklet, so I haven't read it yet. But um, I'm sure when I finished it, I will be having a go and trying to get the family involved in playing Degeric Chess. Be sure to have a look at the Degeric Builders group on Facebook. And um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to go and build this table now for the closing piece of this video. The table's all now finished and all connected up. I just thought I'd show you the insides just to show you the uh, mess of the cables. The spaghetti junction, they'll be tidied up with cable tidies and so on later on. Um, and before I put the top on, let's just zoom out a bit. And there we have it. So I'm going to put the top on and put the figures on to make it look nice. And then I'll demonstrate all the buttons. So there you have it. Now it's not finished yet. I'm still gonna give it a few more coats of paint and a bit more sanding and buffing up and what have you, and then finished off with weathering. But I just thought I'd, you know, for the demonstration, for the benefit of this video, I'd quickly put this together, connect it all up and just show you what it does. So let's just power it up. And when it powers up, it goes into a demo mode and eventually some lights would light up there we go and we've got an lcd display as well which just has got some like arabesque type figures on there um characters on there which have look quite nice and then we've got different options game mode so we've got a game mode which is the instructions i mentioned on the video earlier follow the instructions and that can help you play the game music mode music mode that's quite nice got a keyboard and then back to demo mode display mode display mode there you go and with the display mode got some nice monster sounds so that's cool and then this one here this just takes the audio on and off if you want the audio back on There you go. And there's two buttons over here. One of them volume and the other one's a function for the game, I believe. So that's cool. Looking good. And then you've just got the same on the other side as well with the black keys. They do the same thing. I've got to say, there's some cool sounds on there. Game mode. Music mode. I'd love to play you a tune, but I can't play music. So there you go. So that's it. Table's finished. Um, I'm happy with it. And I've got to say, you know, if you want a nice little project that's different to droid building, maybe you want to consider doing this. That's great. And also, you've just got a few minutes left now, but um, someone's going to win these figures, which is cool. So anyone that's donated £5 to charity or euros or $5, 
then um, they go in the draw for each five you donate to win these pieces. So good luck, everybody, and uh, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.